Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Greetings. Carol, where's the other apocrypha at, Carol? Where is it? Mercy. Anyway, greetings each and every last one of you. Sweet, precious, strong. Victorious, mighty, overcoming name, awesome, coming king, y'all, Shalom, Sheep, Jesus Christ. Um, hope y'all are doing well. Hallelujah, I really, truly do. Um, it's, it's still wet and raining here. You know, we have hardly had two, maybe three good days of just dry weather around this place. It's just, I don't know what's going on. And it looks like a jungle around this place. Everything is so green and so vivid. Um, unbelievable. It really, truly is. Hope you all are doing well. Hey, I want to um, put a few things out here, okay? I'll be in Canada. Um, I think it's June the 13th through the 20th. I'll be in Canada. We the Father's will. Um, after I come back from Canada, I got to take a, the next following week, I got to take a trip to Mississippi with Brother Reynolds. I come back, I'm back for about a week. That next following week, I got to go to New York for a wedding. I come back for maybe a week or two. From that, then I think I, I, I'm setting up a meeting, trying to set up a meeting in Ohio. Come back for a week or two of that. And then I'm working on a meeting up in the Pennsylvania area. Um, in between all that, I'm working, pretty busy. Lord to the King. Uh, no, I hope that you all, every single one of you. Wonder what's going on. Can't hear myself in here. Anyway, I hope that each one of you. Of being edified. We've been talking about biblical marriage a lot. And it's a subject that everybody, while they you know, want to be married, they want to avoid. Because you know that if Pastor Dow gets on the subject, you're going to hear the truth. You're not going to hear your personal opinion, your personal biases, my personal opinion, my personal biases. We're going to hear the will of God. Glory to the King. And um, uh -oh. there's a lot of things about the heart of man that is being discovered while we're doing this. You know, I'm utterly appalled and amazed at how people say they love the truth, and then when truth comes, they don't love it. Before I get started tonight, I um, it seems like in our growth that we're always coming across. Um, Man, I don't see a pen. I'm going to try to call you again tonight, Brother Brad. Why don't leave this broadcast? Let me write this number down. I'm getting sidetracked here, Saints. Uh, Brother Brad. I see your number in the queue. If you want to talk to Pastor Dow, when you call in, I notice that the lady doesn't 
ask you to get in the queue no more. Uh, she just assumed that you're going to press 1 to get in if you'd like to talk to me. Hallelujah. I don't know. I guess it's just the way it is. Hey, I want y'all to be encouraged. Don't forget to pay the most high y'all. Hey, obey the most high y'all. And I know if you're being fed here at this particular ministry, make sure you do diligence to help support the man of God. Hallelujah. I mean, after all, am I a labor that's worthy of his hire? I'm just asking you. You be the judge. Glory to the king. Um, I got a passage of scripture I want to read here real quick, all right? Let me put the chip down for a second. Man. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4. And look what it says, verse 10. Be as a father unto the fatherless. And instead of a husband unto their mother, <clears throat> so shalt thou be as the sons of the Most High. And he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth. In other words, you know, today there's a lot of children running around without their biological father. And the Most High says, if you're a man, you have an opportunity to father, a, you know, somebody's child, meaning be a father to somebody's child. Look what the instruction says right here. It says this, look. Be a father unto the fatherless instead of a husband unto their mother. In other words, you know, you got a lot of people, they'll get married, and they'll say that they have the children in their best interest, but the lying hypocrites really only care about the woman and care nothing about the children, and the children are neglected. Um, that man doesn't invest and spend any time in the children whatsoever at all. Uh, they're usually desolate. They don't learn anything um, uh, because they're too busy trying to put their focus and their attention. What's going on? Am I that low? <clears throat> All right. Bro, Shane come blaring in here. Anyway, they're too busy trying to put their focus and their attention on the mom rather than actually doing what the word says when it says, and I'm going to repeat it again. Be a father unto the fatherless, and instead of a husband unto their mother, so shalt thou be the son of the Most High, and he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth. Can you imagine if the Most High would love you more than your mother doeth if you can be a father unto the fatherless? Well, I don't mind telling you that um, uh, I love children. I was just looking at the picture of a lie today. Me and Sister Carol and Sister Nellie was looking at the picture of a lie. Who was in the picture was myself, Sister Carol, Lydia, and Elias. And Lydia, well, no, Elias probably wasn't no, no bigger than David. You know what I mean? David probably about six years old, seven years old. Lies a little small, young whipper snapper. Now he's a grown man. And he was out there with us at the racetrack watching Pastor Dow ride around the racetrack like a maniac. <laughs> Ain't just something to see the young man. Always be so attentive. He's always been around me. Uh, learning. I treat men a little bit different than women. I try my best to be a father. Um, now in the community, we'll try. And the children here, they have a father. And it takes a tribe to raise this, this village, raise these children, and we do. Everybody's very instrumental. Every child here on this community is loved and loved greatly. They're so precious, every one of them. Hey. I want to read that, but I want to show you something. It seems like every time we turn around in our growth, 
I always have another book. Another book I want to present to you. Well, you ever heard of Qumran Cave? Where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls? They actually found the Apocrypha in there. And I am, and I've been having this for about, I don't know, maybe five years. Somewhere along there now. Maybe seven. <clears throat> Had for a while and I just thought, start, you know, just thought I just started reading in it. But I got this one right here. It's the Cambridge Annotated Study Apocrypha. And it has a lot more books in it than the regular apocrypha than we all been exposed to. Uh, as a matter of fact, and, and, and the chapters are longer. It has uh, a third and a fourth Maccabees. Um, as an appendix, I mean, it's just got a lot of stuff to it. That's, I can't do it too much of an injustice right there, but I tell you, it's got a lot of stuff. And you know what? A lot of the verses read a little bit different um, than what we have in this apocrypha. Now, ain't nothing wrong with this red apocrypha that we, we got from Amazon. It's just that, that there's more information out there. And just like I said before, you be the one to discern and check to see, you know, if it's right for you, you, and you. Hallelujah. And we'll talk about it a little bit later. But you know, um, biblical marriage is very important. Hallelujah. I want you all to know that I love you very dearly. I want you to be honorable. I want you to be very respectful to all men. Men, I want you to take care of responsibilities. Take care of your wife. Take care of the children. Make sure you provide for them. Wives, make sure you love your husband. Make sure you guide the house. Be good Israelites because when this little pathetic life over with, we go to the king in the kingdom and we're going to be judged based on the deeds that we've done in this body. Um, like I said, we're working hard here straightway. I worked extremely hard this week. The brother has too. I know. Uh, man. You know, it's the such thing as getting old. You hate to admit it, you try to defy it all you can, but man, that's the such thing as getting old. Um, hallelujah. If you're coming to Pentecost, here's a straight way. I would appreciate if you call the dining hall and let us know that you're coming so we can logistically prepare for you. Hallelujah. Sorry to be eating and bunching in your face, but I guess I'm a little bit hungry. Um. You may want to stay tuned to tomorrow's message. Because the one thing we haven't been taught in this generation is the law. Now, I ain't saying that's what all the message is going to consist of. But when you understand the law, then you know Yah. You know what he expects. You know his wishes. You know what, what the way he wants us to be, how he wants to operate. And I'm sorry. When I read the law, I mean, I have a love affair that's going on. I love y'all's law. I just do. I do. I just love his law. I just, I don't, maybe something wrong with me. But if something wrong with me, I don't want to be right. I definitely love y'all's law. Love y'all's people too. Um, it's good seeing these Israelites. The ones on the community, the ones that live around the community. It's good seeing them every 
Every time I see him, I get happy. I don't care if I see him twice a week, once a week, or every day. Every time I see him, um, I, I do I do rejoice. And believe me, sisters, just because Pastor Dow does not say anything to you, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> That doesn't mean I don't recognize you and see you. If I don't say anything to you, that means you are doing fine. <laughs> if I do say something to you, you got to be careful how I'm saying it and which way I'm saying it. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. We got a lot of children running around straightway, though. Woo wee, are they running around? Man, they all over the place. I think um, Sister Bell is going to be out. They sent me a picture the other day. Well, Sister Carol showed me a picture of that big, fat, heavy drop of a baby. That baby is the, is fat as I don't know what. Man, that baby fat. Boy, I bet that, that baby, you can throw that baby in any water to float. But, I mean, it's doing what a baby's supposed to do. Eat, sleep, and poop. And um, they all develop differently. Every one of them do. Different stages, different times. Erica sent her mom a video. And, of course, Abigail, and I believe she got her marching shoes on, sent me a video she comes around the corner, Abigail's in some closet, and she's emptying out clothes and, and throwing clothes all over the hallway, just throwing stuff all over the place. Next morning, how what babies do with it? Y'all pray for Sister Chester. Sister Chester thought that she had Heard David screaming. Sister Chester took off running. Tripped, did something, stumped her toe, and ended up breaking her toe. Literally broke it. So she's going to be hobbling along around here in some kind of boot for a while. <laughs> Boy, that hurts too. Nah, right, that hurts. But we get fed good here at Straightway. We get fed really good. Y'all getting yourself ready for the feast? Not only that, are y'all also getting yourself ready? Your heart ready for the fall feast? Because the fall feast this year is going to be taking place a little late now. And myself, it's, it's actually going to be a little bit cooler than normal. I'm going to be happy because I like sleeping when it's cold outside. That means I don't need a fan. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to buy me a new get up. Some of these people, man, I don't even know if it's, you can call it a tent. I'm used to bivouacking. Some of these people, man, they got tents and everything in it with blow up matches. It just looks like a home away from home. They got all the, the only thing they don't have is an extension cord. They may have an extension cord in there too. I'm sitting up here roughing it as if I was still in the military. I walk past these people, tents, man, they got king size blow up mattresses, they got coolers, portable fans, little propane heaters, and lights hanging from the top. I'm like, what in the world? Maybe I'm the one out of touch. And I've been roughing it during tabernacles for the last who knows how many years. Literally, been roughing it. Been sleeping in a little small TP tent or the army tent on cots and everything. Else. And these folks, man, are sleeping in utter luxury. No wonder they don't mind sleep coming to tabernacles and sleeping in tent. Because it's just like they ain't do nothing but just build a home away from home.
I remember the first couple of tabernacles. My wife and I, we slept on the ground. Literally. We had a, a pad, we had a piece of cover, and we put on the ground, we slept on the ground. Oh boy, was our body tore up naked. You can do that when you're young. When you get older, man, you feel it. Shoot. I may ought to give me a solar panel. All right, guess calling number 310-982-4226. I'm here to take your phone calls, answer your questions. Don't be too, too long. We want to get to the saints of most high God. I want to be able to feed y'all sheep. Matter of fact, we got to, it's starting to climb, get really, really humid. And we're going to start putting the ACs um, inside the tabernacle uh, so that the saints can sit in comfort. Um, can you imagine what people used to do 100 years ago and we think we're suffering because we, we ain't got no air conditioning? Man, we better stop crying. Where we at? Guest calling number 310-982-4226. I'm going to talk to Pastor Dow, press number one. You can call the queue. I'll be speaking right to you. Brother Junior, call number 929-929. is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straight With You radio broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Junior? Shalom, sir. Shalom, Junior. Um, yes, sir. Um, these messages, man, they are all body messages. Marriage, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got, like, I look at, like, I read, you know what I'm saying? I see a woman, look at myself, see? I gotta be a good one so far, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta try to be a, a positive third one woman so far, you know what I'm saying? Look, I think spiritually, you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They just spot on, Julie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, we got. I like that message too. Third day too. That you gotta work on. You gotta enjoy the new you. You know what I'm saying? Because at times, you know, we get a place to double the old man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He uses that old nature. You know what I'm saying? That's a problem. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest problem. Yes, you know, sir. Big time. You know what I'm saying? You got to oh, crucify yeah, that book. Excuse me, sir? You got to crucify that old man. Exactly. Every day. Every day, Pastor. Every day. Every single day. Best you can, you know what I'm saying? Because you got no choice. You know what I'm saying? Once you see. Once you see, you know what I'm saying? You must do it. You have no choice. You can't look back. You yeah. Can't, you can't look like a fool. <laughs> yeah. It's a fact. You know what I'm saying, Pastor? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, like we 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 like the community as people pass. Seriously, that's our problem. That's true. Yes, yeah, sir. I work on that. Yeah, I work on that. So we get ready for what's going to what's going to come, and so we get ready for the kingdom pass. Um, he preaching um, pass. Um, you know, all these messages. You know, what I'm saying they tighten up. You know, what I'm saying things are getting tight. You know, what I'm saying it's for serious people. You know, what I'm saying I see what you talking about. You know, I see. You said you ain't going to go to, you're going to leave a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be left behind, Pastor. I don't want to be left behind. I ain't going to be left behind either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Pastor? I, oh, yeah. I feel it. In the good way, you know what I'm saying? That good pressure, that holy, that holy pressure, Pastor, you know what I'm saying? That. Those who are serious, you're not serious? Hey, you know, you know I'm, I'm you're going to be left behind that. That's right. You know what I'm saying, Pastor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, You take care, Pastor. Keep preaching, Pastor. So bless you, Pastor. You're my praise every day, Pastor. All right, my oh, brother. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Can I, I'm going to say something to y'all, all y'all. If you're listening to me, type the number seven in the queue, and I'll be right back here for a second. All right, I'm getting ready to say something very important. Man, I ain't did this in a long time, Ball Talk Radio. And, um, and I'll be right back. Hallelujah. Where are we at? 
You know, JT's in the hospital. Had a stroke. I sent a text message to JT. I haven't heard anything from him. I want to talk to him. I also want to tell him about changing his diet and coming out of that Christian doctrine and stuff because that's too early to be having strokes. Hallelujah. Eating all that pig and swine if he's doing that. Lord to the king. Keep telling y'all I was dealt by a spoon in this country. I'm going to say something. Type number seven in the queue if you can hear me. I'll be right back here in just a second. All right. Got it there. I was trying to get JT to respond to my message because he responded because I asked where he was. Because um, I was actually going to jump on an airplane and go down there and see him, lay hands on him, minister to him, and then come on back because that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. Hallelujah. What I'm about to say, I'm going to say it with all. Humility and humbleness of spirit and mind and soul. If anybody knows my manner of life and my conversation and my lifestyle, you know that I preach and teach for the furtherance of the gospel. And that my desire is that the saints of the Most High Yah in our time, in our generation that we live in, not be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Therefore, the Most High God has given me the spirit of truth to be able to minister to his people. You are his people. And um, we're not lords over Yah's heritage, but we are stewards. And I desire that each and every last one of you grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Yahshua the Hamashiach. So, again, that you don't be destroyed for lack of knowledge. Whatever I know, whatever I learn, whatever I teach, I want to make sure that you know it. But I want you to understand something. Many of you have come from 20 and 30 and 40, some of you 50 years, you have been living in the world and you have been living after the order of Christianity or your own belief system or your own book of the law. I have been living set apart for half of my life I've been living on this earth that has been granted to me by the grace of the most high Yahweh that means I said notice living set apart I didn't say being saved and living in the world and doing whatever I want I said living set apart I have been living around the saints of the most high Yah at least 45% of my life. I said living around them. That means, and I'm going to say this with all humility, 
and all humbleness of spirit and so I don't care what you think you know or what you think you believe you do not know more about life you do not know more about humanity and you're definitely nowhere near as spiritual as I am you're not there are a lot of things that you simply just do not know simply because you don't have an experience and worldly knowledge worldly mindset worldly education is all dung to the most high yah it doesn't apply here. and i've seen so many of you try to apply your worldly knowledge your worldly reasoning your worldly intellect to this spiritual life and you literally look like a fool you literally do they are so diametrically opposed to each other they are so far from each other from the north and the south as well as from the east to the west I did not say that you don't possess some intelligence I'm just saying that many of you do not have the intelligence that you should have in the most high Yah. And that takes time. That comes by experience. And that comes by living it. You can't use logic and reason in faith. It doesn't work. You can't use what you used in the world to selectively deduct and think that you have things figured out. You've got to have the Holy Spirit. And then even at having the Holy Spirit, you've got to cultivate. You have to nourish and you have to feed the spirit of Yah that is in you through the word, through fasting, and through praying. And I'm telling you, there is something when it comes to experience. And when you have lived set apart literally for two decades... And you live around the saints of the Most High, Yah, the majority of the time. You know, you have to understand. I have seen people who call themselves saints and they were just as wicked as hell. I have seen the resilience of the devil. I have sent people, I have sent him watch people so called pretend to be full of the Holy Spirit. And I've watched them turn so quickly. I've watched some of the people who you thought were strong in the faith be so weak all because they hear a false witness spreading forth a slander, a lie, or a false accusation and it end up taking somebody right out of the faith. You know what they end up doing? They end up getting offended at the one who the Most High Yah First open their understanding and their ears to hear. It's just the truth. And drew them to me. And now they no longer listen because they listen to somebody else. Be it a woman preacher. So called tell bearing or telling tales. See the power was in believing that lie. And so many people's lives are desolate now. Desolate of truth. They are literally schizophrenic. They don't know right from wrong, up from down. They're double-minded. They're two-spirit. Uh, you can't even you can't even do. You can't even give them biblical terms because they don't even know how to submit to it because they're so offended, so dead, and so desolate. They don't know how to repent. They don't know how to come. They don't know how to walk in this way of life. They don't know how to do it because there's a spirit of offense that is in them. I know that many of you may fancy yourself wise after this world, but I'm telling you, being wise in Yah, there is no comparison. So I hope that I said something to give you a little bit of understanding and comprehension because uh, if there's anybody on this earth that desires for you to be fed with all godly knowledge and wisdom, it is Pastor Dow. It surely is. I didn't start all this just so um, um, I guess for my health or whatever it is, I believe even though I am in pretty good health I did it because number one, love the Father and you should do the same thing. Take it into account 
And remember, by that fruit, you should know them. I want y'all to pay attention of the people who used to be part of the ministry. They're pretty stupid. They're pretty brutish. They don't know what they're doing. You can find out what they're doing. All you got to do is go to Facebook. Um, they out on social media networks. First thing they do is tear out that holy head covering. They paint their face up just like Jezebel in the world. And and, and, and there's no, that, you know what? They, they, there's nothing in their life. That resembles y'all. The devil, like we've been warning y'all, and telling you, you know, people didn't think it was gonna be them. And you know what? When you're in a reprobate mind, you don't think it's ever gonna be you. Utterly amazing. I just wanted to tell you that because you know the Bible says, don't be too sure of yourself lest you fall. And our scriptures, our culture, our heritage, it's full of warning. And the reason why we need to take heed to those warnings is because we don't want to fall after the same example of unbelief. Can you imagine investing 10 or 15 years only to end up having your heart deceived? You go back off into the world and now you're no longer even keeping the commandments no more? Oh, man, what darkness. What darkness it is. Hmm. Y'all is good. 717 Pennsylvania. Let's go to Brother Arcelio. 717. This is Pastor Dowling in the Survey 2 Radio Broadcast. I can help you, Brother Arcelio. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. I can help you. Pastor, you, you, you help all the time. Uh, there's never been a. a... Pastor! <laughs> There's never been a study. I, I love you. I love you too. That's that's my little bit. <laughs> There's never been a study. There's never been um um blog talk. There's never been anything that you have ever said or done that has not edified. And if there's anyone who does not see that, there's something wrong. I thank you. Uh, I praise Yahweh. For that, and um, I, I've just been experiencing some things that I never thought I would, and, and I just thank you. I thank straightway, and I give glory to the King. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Uh, there's some saints here that want to say something to you. Sure. It's about to long. How you doing? Um, going off of what Brother Arcelio is saying is correct, man. Every time I need you, you just say something to really put my mind back into focus. Mm. I thank the Father for you so, so much because sometimes I need to hear some things that you say, you know? Hallelujah. It really hits me in the core. It hits me in the core and it really makes me look at myself every time. Now, I don't look at nobody else. I look directly at myself and say, what are you doing wrong, Michael? That the Father needs you to change, you know? Oh, and, um, it's a blessing. I just want you to know that, uh, thank you. Hey, so much. Thank you. Are oh, you welcome? And, Brother thank Michael, you. hey, thank you for your faithful uh, support of this man of God, my brother. It, yes. it does not go unnoticed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. I got some other people that want to talk to you too, Pastor. Hold on one second. All right. Um, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Sister Ayana. Shabbat Shalom, Sister. I just wanted to say bless you. That's all. Bless you. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Sister Elijah. Hey, Sister. How you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Hallelujah. Blessed, tired, all the above, but I'm, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. We thank you, Pastor. Bless you. Bless you straightway. Bless you, Israel. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. That's Pennsylvania. Glory to the King. Let's go to um, Virginia, Brother Chris. Call number 571-571. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Radio Broadcast. I can help you there, Brother Chris. 
Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. How are you? I'm blessed. Shabbat Shalom, how are you? I'm fine. Actually, no, that's not very true. Um, I do, I do have a question. All right. I guess it leads into my next one. Um, I know the word says not to bring any unnecessary burdens in on the Shabbat. Yeah. But am I able to uh, ask you for counsel? Is that bringing a burden? Um. I mean, ain't the Sabbath here just yet, but sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, for starters, I want to serve the Most High and be with His people. Um, but I also want to practice and invest time in myself. All right? You remember the last thing I asked you last about, about investing in myself and learning helpful skills? No, I don't remember that. You have to understand, bro, Chris. I talk to a lot of people every week. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry. Um, I face condom self-condemnation issues and guilt. And, uh... Why do it? It causes me... Huh? Why, why, why be guilty? Why face condemnation? Are you in Christ Jesus? No, sir. I'm not sure. You, you're not sure? Then you need to get around the saints no. of the Most High Yah and learn what salvation is. Okay. You're in Virginia. You need to find some saints. There's saints in New, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. Now, Brother Asus is gone from Virginia now, but there are people there. Yes, sir. You need to learn how to get around and forsake not the fellowship of the assembly of the saints so you can learn uh, what it means to have salvation. Hallelujah. That's your first step. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Um, hallelujah. Also, good word, by the way. That, that was really... Uh, that really puts things into perspective. That's amazing that uh, people in the faith for 10 and 15 years can end up going astray. But I would just like to thank you, Pastor, and a Shabbat Shalom, and bless you. Hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom. Y'all make sure that y'all try to make an effort to get around the saints. You can't be strengthened if you're not around the saints of the Most High God. It's impossible. Um... Let's go to New York, to brother Dominic. 718 718. It's Pastor Dow, you know, Survey Truth Radio broadcast. Not can help you, son. I don't guess brother Dominic is in the call queue. All right. Let's go to Georgia. 706. 706, this is Pastor Dow. You're on the Sherry True Radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Ra'ach, Dow, Ban, Yehuda. Hallelujah. Bless you, brother. In me. How you doing, my brother? Good hearing you. Oh, bless the most high, y'all, Pastor. Just, um, doing good, Pastor. Again, rebuke, corrected. Um, learning, growing. Uh... Gaining a lot of wisdom, everything, Pastor. Just blessed all around. That's good. The way I'll tell a young man, mend his ways by taking heed to the word of God. That's good. That's good. You're growing up fast, then. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, Pastor. I just want to be obedient, Pastor. Um, you know, it's been a while, you know, uh, not called in, but I just want to say that I thank you for everything. Thank you for loving me, Pastor. Uh, um, and also that you mean so much to me, Pastor. Not even words can explain it, and uh, the elders as well. And uh, that's what you all have to say, Pastor. And most of y'all continue using you as a mouthpiece. Hallelujah. Be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged. All right, son? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I will. Brother Jay, I want to let it rip right now, Pastor. All right.
Shalom Israel. Shabbat Shalom. Glory to the King. That's Georgia. What was you saying, Brother Emmy? Bless y'all. All right, all right, all right. Let's go to Maryland, Brother Brad. Call him a 443-443. It's Pastor Dow. You know, straight with two radio broadcast. How can I, Brother Brad? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. There it is. Oh, Straightway, Maryland. Hey, Pastor. Yes, sir. Hey, Pastor, let me apologize for um, not receiving the call earlier. It was an unknown number, Pastor. I just, I just really don't answer them, but I apologize, man. Well, I had to. I well, usually if I'm calling from my house, because I mean, can you imagine what it'd be if everybody had my home phone number? How much sleep I would get? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, yeah, I listened to the voicemail. I said, oh, my. I said, I said oh, man, he's going to be mad at me. No, I ain't going to be mad at you. Yeah, sir. Um, we just want to give, uh, tell you Shabbat Shalom. We want to thank you for being our shepherd. Uh, we love we love what you do. Uh, we miss you. We miss all the saints um, in, in Tennessee um, and, and everybody in, in Straightway, Maryland. Man, they, we just love you and we honor you, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, hallelujah. I miss and love y'all very dearly myself. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom to you, Pastor. Uh, but Brother Mike want to speak with you. Come on with it, Brother Mike. What you got? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom, Brother Mike. Shabbat shalom. And we'll start, start, start off by saying uh, thank the most high for uh, bringing us this way and, uh, and leading us to you, Pastor. And uh, we, we thank you for all your hard work and the elders and teachers. And uh, and uh, and uh, we was trying to find out how we get permission. Uh, uh, maybe when you come to New York, all the Maryland states come up there too. If uh, we can get some uh, some type of permission to, to travel up that way. No, nah, I mean if I'm if I'm actually um, coming out and doing a meeting, you don't need any permission to come to the meeting. You just come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. So, and, uh, 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 be at the Fox River, uh, it looks like we, uh, we'll be seeing you in July, sir. Still got no white teeth, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Uh, oh, hey. 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 Oh, Praising the Most High for another chance to come together and praise His holy name. <laughs> and, and we still in a fight, Pastor. We still in a fight. Good. Hang in there and stay in there. If I can stay in there yep. and keep fighting a good fight of faith, y'all can too. Yes, sir. Keep holding that flag up because when we see it, it gives us it gives us hope that there's somebody who's done this and and continue to do this. And whatever we got going on is the most high is bigger than it. So Hallelujah. you hold that flag up, Pastor. We looking at y'all for, for, for encouragement. And, 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 and we don't always get that, you know what I'm saying, call and, and ask all the questions we might have. Sometimes we, we too ashamed either of, of a sin nature or whatever the case. So we look <laughs> to how y'all living and not, you know what I'm saying. So we do appreciate everything you do, Pastor. Bless y'all. The saints all around this world. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to the king. Shabbat shalom. Uh, how you doing, Pastor? I'm doing all right. A little bit tired this week. You know, I've worked extra, a little extra hard this week, but I'm all right, though. That's good. It's a sad, that's a rap. Hallelujah. And so I just want to say Shabbat Shalom to all, all the straightway saints around the world. You know, I love y'all daily. I live straightway down Tennessee. Um, so uh, I really don't have much to say, but um, I just uh, thank you, Pastor, for all that you're doing. And just keep telling the truth, Pastor. Hallelujah. Keep praying for me. Okay, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. I just wanted to say, um, 
Uh, whenever you whenever you get time, you know, give me a call again. Okay. I'll try to call you tonight okay. after the broadcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Glory to the King. Shabbat Shalom, Maryland. Boy, you just love them all, yes, don't sir. you? Hey, I want y'all to pray for your pastor because listen to me. Listen to me very closely. You know that I'm spoken evil against all the time. That means that every time somebody speaks evil against me, they're speaking a curse on me. And then if they speak evil against the ministry, which you are part of, they're speaking a curse on you too. And so we're in spiritual warfare and we have to send back these curses every day because you know that those who are submitted to the devil, they're invoking and inviting these evil spirits to go out and do their bidding. And we can't see it, but man, we got to, I'm telling you, we got to, we got to really launch into this. We, we cannot lax on prayer. We can't because these people are not lax in speaking curses and we have to send them back to the senders. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Let's go, brother Steve. There in New York, call number three four seven three four seven. It's Pastor Dow. You know, Sherby Two Radio broadcast. How can I help you, brother Steve? Shabbat shalom, my pastor. Oh, you just struck a chord, pastor. Speaking Ooh. against the ministry and sending curses. Oh, he just oh, pastor. Mercy, <laughs> pastor. The attack, they just, they just, they just don't end. But it's so beautiful when you're in a walk and you're faithful to the Most High, because the people that curse you, there's only people watching very diligently. And uh, Pastor, you always say so beautifully that when people speak against you, if you watch their manner of life and their character would you please follow that and pastor is literally just watching how things have been turning around man pastor the people that were so vehemently against you when they watch the actions of those that speak against you they start to question and they don't think the way they used to think before. And it's amazing. And there's a there's a verse that you always harp on. And it's really been ringing true to me, especially this week. If you don't mind me reading that, the verse. Um, uh, the verse is in 1 Peter 3, 16. And it says, Having a good conscience. Yes. That whereas they speak evil, evil. of you uh -huh. as of evildoers, yep. they may be ashamed yes. by falsely accusing your good conversation in Christ. Oh, Pastor. <laughs> oh, man. A father and his word, it is a living word. It's amazing because there's so many gifts in not reacting viciously against the devil's attack towards you. And people watch that. People truly watch the way you react when you're under attack. And it's it, it, it's been making an amazing walk, seeing how the Father has always come through. If you don't mind, I'm, I just want to read one more verse that has really been on my heart, especially this week. Sure. Um, it's in Isaiah, and it says, and you told us back to put this verse in our hearts, and it is a verse that is so important in my walk personally especially what I've been going through. And it says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Yep. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment yep. shall thou shalt condemn. That's right. And this is the 
heritage of the servants of Yah, and their righteousness is of me, saith Yahweh. Oh, Pastor, I'm so happy that the Father called me to this walk because no weapon formed against me shall prosper at all. And I am going to walk this walk of faith, and I'm going to walk this race. I don't care how long it takes, I'm going to make it to that finish line. And I just want to thank you, Pastor, always crying aloud like a trumpet and sounding the horn so that we all in our spirit awaken to the truth. I just wanted to thank you, Pastor, for all that you've been doing. Oh, well, you're welcome. You're doing what you're doing, Pastor. You are welcome, son. Yes, I'm going to keep on striving, keep on running, keep on singing, keep on praying. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, Pastor. Keep doing what you're doing, Pastor. I love you so much. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. And I, no words, Pastor. Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Be encouraged. Glory to the King. Let's go to um, Brother Blake. They're in Texas, call number 512-512. It's Pastor Dowling on the Server 2 radio broadcast. How can I help you there, Brother Blake? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. How you doing? I'm all right. How can I help you? Um, I just have a few questions. Um, my first question is... Um, <laughs> Like what is what is like really fasting and how do you like really do it? Say that again. What is fasting and how do you truly do it? Well, there are all different kinds of fast. Um, if you want to go on, let me just make it simple. You want to go on a supernatural fast? No food, no water. Uh, that's a supernatural fast. Then they got fast where you can actually fast um, uh, uh, from food. They can drink a little bit of water. Um, and that, that, that's good enough. Uh, that's all you need to know. But the one thing it's doing is afflicting your soul. It actually humbles the flesh man. Every time you fast, it humbles the flesh man. And it and it actually strengthens the spirit man. Because the spirit man don't need natural food, drink, and water. Uh, and that's what fasting does. It help break the band of wickedness. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Amen. Because uh, me and my wife, you, we we've been listening to you strong for about six months now. It's a, uh, it's crazy because you know we we heard one of your messages before on YouTube. You know, saying uh, you know if you if you uh, if, if you're a Christian and you find you know the way you are, you know you know don't watch this video and you know we watched the video and you know it it didn't really register until we really started to see. You know, our eyes were opened, and um, we we faithfully and and just truthfully started, you know, listening to you for about six months now, and you've truly been a blessing to our lives. So we we just praise the Father for you, and and we just thank you. Well, hallelujah! I'm glad that you're listening. You're doing your due diligence. You're moving slow. Uh, you're checking everything out. Uh, because that way you'll know what man of spirit I am of. You'll know what spirit, man of spirit you are of. And you can tell if it's the Father or not. So glory to the King. Welcome aboard. Amen. Amen. And uh, just two more questions. Um, about that um, that silver in the in the the dowry of the of the the maiden. You know that when when you when you said that two hundred thousand. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, that, that really, that really got me. So I, I went in and I just had to like go do some, some research on that. And, um, so basically w the research that I've done says that, uh, 50 shekels equals like 20 to 25 ounces. And I multiplied that, you know, by today's silver by the ounce and I got like, Three hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on what different you know site said what a, a shekel 
was an ounce is. And I was just wondering, you know, how how y'all how did y'all get that uh two hundred thousand and eight hundred thousand? I mean, uh, four hundred thousand. Well, if you was listening to me, I defaulted that to a scholar who knows more about biblical marriage than I can probably ever understood in 10 years of actually studying. And I admit that. His name is Dr. William Luck. And um, he's a scholar on this subject right here. Um, and he knows this subject like who knows what. But see, our problem is, is this. Is that that we think, for instance, you know, of the penalty of sin is a lot. Of, is a lot. It's a heavy weight, right? So what we try to do is we try to look at a shekel based on our understanding and money value of today. And we look up in these dictionaries, you look up in these things to see how much a shekel is based upon the money system of today. And we never go back into the culture to see how much a shekel was. Do you know how hard it was to come back, come, come by a shekel back then? I could just imagine because you they have like a tenth of a shekel and a twentieth of a shekel, so I can just imagine exactly you know, how hard it was to just do a thing. So the money value and the money system was everything was a whole lot more valuable than this. Look at this. Look at this. This devalued currency that we have today, and believe you me, it is devalued big time. So what we try to do is take our devalued mindset, which is devalued currency, and we try to come out on the cheap. And stuff. Whenever y'all made laws, he made laws for a particular instance so that they would sting. So that you have a good reminder. And that's the reason why you often hear talk about servants and people selling themselves into slavery in the service. Because if it's only three or four hundred dollars, man, you can go out in one week and make that. If you look at today's what they call just you know weights and balances, which is not just at all. So I think the problem is is that we're trying to look for wiggle room. Rather than actually truly looking at the intent of what y'all said in his law. And we're trying to use this system to where it's Federal Reserve notes and there's really no just weights and balances. And then that's another thing. It's a shekel. Is it a piece of gold or is it a piece of silver? Which one is it? That, that's, what, that's what I wanted myself. That's what I wanted myself. Because, it's a, because it, you know, if you do it by, uh, uh, we just assume a shekel is a piece of silver. But self is silver according to the word. And so if it's gold, boy, you really in some serious trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. The whole idea was to deter anyone who wanted to transgress the law from the law. And ain't nobody today going to be deterred from the law if all they got to pay is $300 for land with a woman. <laughs> Man, it's just ignorant. It's nonsensical. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, according to that, uh, according to you know that that equation that uh, that God made up, uh, that um, that cave that Abraham bought for uh, for Sarah was like eighty million dollars, according to that. And when we you know calculated that, we were like, oh my gosh! Hey, like, check this out. Uh, look Look at this. I'm going to show you the difference and I'm going to show you how wicked we are in our mindset today to think that you can actually get a cheap virgin on the cheap for $300. I'm going to show you something. How long did Joseph had to work for Rachel? What was that, like 14 years? 14 years. And that's a, so I, I guess she was a cheap virgin too then, huh? Mm -hmm. Nah. But you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? See, we're looking, we have a spirit in this generation to where we think and we assume that we can go back into antiquities and figure out everything that's going on. But I'm going to tell you right now, that ain't, I'm telling you right now, brother, if I want to go out and rape a virgin and my only, and my only um, um, penalty was $300, and and I get to keep her. What penalty is that? <laughs> you know, the mind today, or the mind today, would just accept that, and and th that'll be nothing to to a wicked person today, because pretty much only the wicked has the riches and is fat. These people are corrupt, and that's why I keep telling you. What we do is we look for stuff when our mind is messed up. We look for stuff. That will give us wiggle room to get by on the ease and on the cheap rather than looking at what the reason and the intent of the law was. 
So William Locke, who again, I would tell you, who probably knows more about biblical marriage and polygyny, at least got 10 years on me in it. And then after him, uh, I don't know anybody else who knows it more better than I do. And if he come up with $200,000 or something like that, I believe it. Because ain't nobody spent the time, effort, or energy that he has in this subject. So anybody else is coming, and they've only been looking at this thing for a year or two. Or, or, or they don't have any clue or idea at all. They, they're just deceived. Man. Wow. Well, you know, that, that I'm... I'm pretty convinced on that. <laughs> I'm pretty convinced on that because uh, two hundred thousand dollars versus three hundred is w way more of a sting. Way more of a sting. Yeah, because you can go get a prostitute for three hundred dollars <laughs> and get. <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my last question is: um, it's more. I have uh, some advice. Um, I started my own business, and um, I just wanted to know if you if you had some some advice for entrepreneurship. Yeah, get ready to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate uh, your time and your uh, your wisdom and your knowledge. And um, my wife is right here, and she just has a, a few questions for you, Pastor. Sure. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Well, first off, I just want to thank you, of course, for all the wisdom you've given us and all your time and effort. We really enjoy the videos, especially the ones of you and uh, the younger brothers out there building those houses, doing the dirty work. We, we like watching those videos. Well, you're welcome. I didn't have too many questions. I just wanted to know, we trying to gather up an offering to send to Straightway, and I was just curious, do you accept seeds? Can we send you seeds as an offering as well? Sure you can. Yes, sir. Well, I, that was all I needed to know. We won't hold you up too much longer. <laughs> Thank you again for everything, Pastor. Well, bless you. Have a good Sabbath. Yes, sir. You too. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Man, that's a beautiful family, isn't it? Isn't that a beautiful family? Man, that's all right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you right now. you got to be a special man or woman to listen to Pastor Dow. Because Pastor Dow ain't cutting no corners, and Pastor Dow don't play no games when it comes to the Word of God. I don't cut no corners for nobody. It is the pure, uncut, unadulterated Word of Yah, and that's just the truth. All right, where we at? Let's go to um, Wisconsin. And by the way, bless your brother David and wife up there in Minnesota. Um, Wisconsin, call them, and brother Cody and brother Dan, bless y'all. Uh, Wisconsin, call number 262. 262 is Pastor Dowie on the Radio Broadcast. How can I help you there in Wisconsin? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. Wow, this is, uh, this is the first time I, I ever got through to you. I uh, tried a few other times, and I wasn't able to uh, connect, and maybe I just didn't know how to get into the queue. But, um, Who am I talking with? I uh, very much... I'm, I'm, this is Brother Jim. I'm sorry. All right. Hi, right, Brother Jim. Welcome. The, um, I just, uh, you know, I thought a lot about what you said earlier in the evening and about how you have lived this life. And I think uh, as I have looked into your ministry and have begun, you know, following a lot of your ministry, that is what has really drawn me is because I see in you a person who lives it for real. Yes, sir. And... Um, you know, I, I very much, uh, very much appreciate that, and I appreciate the ministry that you have. Um, I'd just like to uh, send a greeting while we're speaking uh, to uh, Elder Doug, because he has ministered to me several times, and I just would like to 
greet him and say, Shabbat Shalom, Elder Doug. I hope you are well this evening. Yeah, he can hear you. Awesome, awesome. Um, the uh, you, you really uh, your your uh, your message on uh, Thursday of loving yourself, mm. uh, loving the new you, yeah, really ministered to me a lot, and I just want to thank you for that word that you put forward. It uh, it really opened my eyes about a few things, and it also just uh, you know it just gave me a lot of peace. Well, hallelujah. Glory to the King. That's what it should have done. Amen. Amen. I don't have a whole lot to say, Pastor. I just wanted to greet you and and thank you and tell you how much I appreciate your ministry. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, sir. Have a wonderful evening. Stay tuned tomorrow. You do this. Amen. I will be. God bless you now. All right, bless you. Shalom, bye -bye. shalom, bye, bye. All right, all right. Let's go to Pennsylvania to Brother Robert. 610-610. Pastor Dow, you're on the Sermon Truth Radio broadcast. How can I help you there, Brother Robert? Shabbat shalom, Pastor. I just want to say shabbat shalom. And uh, I had a question for you. Uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for me. And I had a question that, uh, that I needed help with. Uh, my sister, she was a Christian, and I, and I asked her to come to, uh, to the Shabbat service with us. And she told me, she said that she would come if I would go to her church. Uh-oh. And, uh, and, uh, and she sent me a video, and she was baptized like the Trinitarian way, like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and a female baptizer. And I wanted to know, uh, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should go to her church, and then uh, she'll come to uh, the Shabbat service with Brother Felix house? Or do you think I should just step back and... Uh, like I, I'm just at a loss. I don't know what to do. I'll tell you exactly what to do. I'll tell you exactly what to do. Normally, in my experience over the years, what happens is, is we'll have brethren that every, I mean, we've dealt with this one deal with a thousand times. And what usually happens is, is that uh, you'll end up going over there, and then she will not come over to church where you are. So, what you do is tell her, you first. You come to assembly where I'm at first, then I'll fulfill my obligation. Okay, that's that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> you make sure she goes first. Thank you, Pastor. I will do that, Pastor. Thank you for the advice, and uh, Pastor, Pastor, we all love you very much, and 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 everything you do is just is just beautiful, and we all need it. You know, Pastor, you are our shepherd. We are the sheep. We are so grateful to have you. All the saints in Jersey, New York. Everywhere, Pastor. We all love you and we need you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Well, bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. All right. Let's go to Arkansas, Brother Keith. Call him a 510 510. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Sherman Truth Radio broadcast. Uh, I can help you there, Brother Keith. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, how are you doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. I can help you, sir. I just want to call in and say Shabbat Shalom to my brothers and sisters out there. And, uh, and Pastor, you just keep on preaching that word. Keep on doing it. Keep on bringing it. Edifying us all. Uh, the words you gave earlier, what you were talking about, uh, people, uh, Listening to other people and everything that really kind of touch on with all that, but you know, just just keep on bringing that truth, man. All keep right. On it. Then once you go, keep throwing that, keep throwing that motor right. All right, my brother. Yes, sir. All right. Well, bless you, brother. Keep. Bless. You. Where we at? Try to make sure I do this thing right. Let's go uh, to do, 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 do. Texas. Call number 972-972. This is Pastor Dow. You know, serve with you the radio broadcast. I can help you. Texas 972 going once, twice, 
three times. All right. Let's go to Arizona. Call number 480480. It's Pastor Dow. You're on the Radio Broadcast. I can help you there in Arizona. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, my name's Cody. I've been watching you for probably four years or more. You read one of my letters. I'm not going to add that. going to load all my stuff up in storage and send you a key. <laughs> How you doing, Cody? I'm doing all right. I'm doing a lot better now. I don't know. Some of your messages, the ones on slander, I started watching that one and had all kinds of fingers appointed at all these people. And by the time the end of the message, man, I was like, oh, that one hit me. But uh, I just want to thank you for the ministry. Thank you for what you do. And uh, I called the dining hall. I left my number um, with a sister, even that brief conversation, just, just that brief conversation with her. I mean, a different spirit of people than what I'm having to be around here out in this world. So I just want to thank you. And when you get a chance, just give me a call. And even the other morning, you know, a couple of days ago when you was laying a brick with them youngsters, oh man, I woke up that morning and, uh, you know, I was sitting there, sitting there in bed and I said, man, I wish I was sitting there laying brick with pastor today. So I don't know if there's anything to that, but maybe one day we'll be laying some brick together. So. Boy, there's a lot to it. Shabbat Shalom. All right, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Bye. All right, all right. Let's go to Texas again. Call number 832-832. It's Pastor Dow. You know, share with you radio broadcast. I can help you. Shabbat Shalom, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Who am I speaking with? Brother Josiah. Brother, brother Josiah. Uh, Yes, sir. I'm actually, uh, I'll make a brief making my way uh, back to Houston, actually, um, kind of <laughs> trucking home. But I uh, just want to say thank you, sir. Uh, I love you. Your encouragement this week uh, was above and beyond. I was listening to the cardinality, the sermon, cardinality. Uh, and it was just going through some mess with my job and them not letting me have a Sabbath off. So uh, that's all, sir. I just want to say thank you. That's all. I'm, uh, I'm driving right now. So I just want to say thank you and I love you, sir. All right, my brother. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to uh, Florida. Brother Chili. Call number 310-310. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Strip Tooth Radio broadcast. How can I help you, brother? Shabbat shalom, Pastor. How you doing? Glory to the King. Doing all right. Doing all right. How can I help you? Uh, I am just want to tell you if you're best to be updated, uh... My wife, I just walked in the house earlier today. Um, my wife and my daughter were watching one of your videos. And then uh, I asked her what she was doing. And she was like, Dow. She pointed at you on the on the, on the computer. I said, Dow. My daughter is 16 months old. She already mentioned your name. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so I was super excited. Oh, that made me happy. <laughs> you pretty much got a sport over here at every... Uh, with uh, videos that we do sometimes two, three times a day. There's times that you don't put a video of doing that. Like, I'm like, man, and then the next thing you put like two or three, so I'm just spoiling us with those videos, but I do appreciate them. Well, hallelujah. Bless you. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, well, my family's doing great. We're all good, healthy. Just um, making necessary steps um, to come out of it. Uh, um, that is our, our goal right now. Um, me and my wife are already having a conversation. Not good credit. I have some tangible assets, but uh, we've been talking about to the extent to expedite it to max our credit cards just to get out. Right. Uh, but, um, but that's about it. Yeah, I said, uh, I love your construction videos. That, that uh, Those have been a to me a lot because of... Uh, it shows that you're willing to work and, and bring young men. Uh, and I've spoken before with Brother Elias, it's very intelligent, very, uh, very, very powerful spiritual young man. And uh, to see that he's working too, it just, it, it brings some, it brings joy to my heart to see that, uh, that you can be spiritual and natural at the same time. So, right. it, uh, so I'm just, just, again, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I just want to say thank you for, uh, for and all the saints and Shabbat Shalom and thank you all. 
All right, I want you to stay encouraged. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I'm actually trying to, at the same time, listen to y'all trying to fool with this phone about the apocryphal, but at the same time, it's all right, though. Uh, did I do that one right there? Yeah, I did do that one. All right, all right. Let's go to Ohio, 614-614. The brother Mike is Pastor Dow. You know, serve with you radio broadcast. How can I help you, brother Mike? Glory to the king. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, how you doing? How you I'm, doing? Uh, Pastor, I'm going to tell you how I'm doing. Me and Sister Lisa, don't you leave this room. Get back in here. Don't you leave me. <laughs> he said, did he say it? He said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. If we sit at home, we sit at home in 11 years. We sat at home in 11 years. And we checked on that one. It wasn't him. We checked on that. We about to give up him. But we kept we kept that Shabbat did. And and then one day I typed it in. I said, That's him? That's him. He off the hook. That's him. <laughs> he lived in a forest. That's him. He sold everything. That's him. Lived in a trailer. That's him. Lived poor. That's him. Yeah. Preach the gospel. That's him. Yeah. Preach the truth. That's him. <laughs> Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. I watched a video today. Kids, I'm, I'm way behind. I've been hitting it hard since we got home from Hopkinsville. Got out on the road. I've been out. I'm just time getting back home today. And, oh, she didn't left here. Well, she slipped out on me. Anyway, bless you, Pastor. How you doing? I am doing all right, bro. Mike been working, you know what I mean, working really hard and stuff like that, kind of like you have. But other than that, I'm encouraged, doing well. Well, I called to encourage you. You know, I saw a video of that of young men putting him block up. And a couple weeks ago when I was home and Sister Lisa found out that uh, Brother Brett had moved on the land, she informed me of that. And it happened to be on the Shabbat, like about, Eight o'clock in the morning, and unbeknownst to everybody else in the house that was asleep, she cranked them speakers up 200 watts, and we got at it. We prayed the Most High. Brother Brett, I'm saying, we going to throw up praise. We're going to give up praise, Most High. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we we rocked out that day. Yes, sir. Glory to the King. But, uh, call say hallelujah, uh, because I saw the videos of young men. Working with you, building a block. I mean, I'm a little behind on the videos. I'm catching up. Right. And I was thinking, I said, them young men, don't, they don't even have a clue. But it's all right not to have a clue when you're young. Yep. They don't have a clue that one day they're going to look back at 25, 30 years old, and they're going to say, you know what, man? Look what Pastor Dow. Look how the Most High blessed us with Pastor Dow. Yep. Learn how to build this block and do this and that and that and this and this and that and that, this and this and that and that and this. Woo! Yeah, right now they don't really see how important it is right now because they're young. When they get a little bit older, it'll set in. I think it's starting to set in a little bit now, a little bit more than what I give them credit for, but I ain't going to give them no damn credit. <laughs> Not damn. Anyway. But uh, you know what, Plancer? I saw a video. I've been catching up on videos. And I'm going to, man, I'm going to let some of them sing. My brother, my family. I, this is my family, Pastor. And I'm going to let them have it when I see them. Because I got a warrant out for my arrest. And they could have warned. Are you serious? The all you can the all you can eat buffet police got a warrant out for me. I saw myself in some of them videos. <laughs> I said, who the hell is that? Sister Lisa, that's you. Shut up. What are you hey, Sister Lisa, be quiet. She mm -hmm. over there grinning. I love her though. But yeah, oh, we, we praise the Most High. We glorify and exalt His name. We are thankful. We are edified. He, without a doubt, led us to this ministry. And He led me to the man of Yah. And that's why when the things I don't understand, I don't question. I just wait. You know why? Because He led me here. And He's not going to lead me astray. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His promise. That was a promise. That's, that, that's a promise. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And I'm enjoying it. That's so what? you know what, Pastor? Anytime, anytime you, Sister Carol, are able to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you go right ahead, Pastor. You better just dive right in. Dive right in. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yes, sir. We what? appreciate it. We appreciate you. We call to to thank you for all the edification and to to uplift you to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep being obedient. That the Most High keep bringing forth these truths. And I don't understand. Polygyny is so easy to understand. Why is it so damn hard for some people, Pastor? Can well, you help me with that one? It's Why because so it's, it has to do with culture. I keep saying it over and over again. Culture, 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 oh, culture, yeah. culture. Yes, heritage, 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 heritage. I mean, Jeremiah 17, 4 Thank said that we would discontinue from our heritage. So we're in another culture and another heritage. And it's impossible for people to actually look through the lenses of the Hebraic scripture and see it the way Yah says because, you know, they're so deceived in what they believe. They think they're believing right, but they don't want to see it the way Yah sees it. And they'll let you know that they really, truly are not Yah's people. It's just that simple, ain't it? Yep, pretty much. It's just that simple. It really is. And it's not that I'm better than anybody. I'm not above anybody. But I keep his law, statutes, and commandments. And I have his Holy Spirit. That. That's what bring me up. That's why I have to come down to deal with these base minded. But I'm leaving that to everybody else. I got to, I got other things to work on. Oh, hallelujah. I understand. Hallelujah. Hey, how, how's the, the, the wife and the family doing up there? Everybody's doing wonderful. Everybody is. I mean, truly, actually, in all honesty, uh, I, I sent out a text message to about three of my children. My, my 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 son, my other son, and my son's wife. Yeah. And they ass is on point now. The boy, they doing better. I let them know. I'm sick and tired of. It. I'm sick and tired, and I'm going to follow the king. You can go with me, or you can keep. You know, I, I, I'm not playing, Pastor. I'm serious. I'm not letting nothing hold me back. I love them. I love them dearly. I love you. And I've waited a long time for you. And I pointed them towards you. And proof and evidence have the Father shown right in their face. I mean, when you see a man smoke 32 years and then finally get with a, a pastor, a preacher that, that the Most High hear him, and he petitioned the Father and healing take place. Woo! When you get with a sister, Sister Barb, and she prayed, and y'all know that my ankle was broken. Y'all know they knew all I was going through at that time. And you see them ligaments and tendons heal, and a man come home that couldn't run, but he go visit straightway, come back home, and not only can he run, he can whoop somebody's ass. I mean, hey, boy, is this king? <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. right. The case. And then and then they see things change in their life. But I'm trying to tell them, you up under my covering right now. You True. gonna have to stand. You gonna have to stand. You under my and they don't they think I'm hard on them all. Dad tripping again. No, dad done told your ass the truth and dad done found a man. The most high done blessed dad with a man that's gonna teach us and elders that are held accountable. Y'all better come on and enjoy this blessing because if you don't, hey, uh, you know, hey. Well, they're going to find uh, out, that's for sure. You know, you know, hey, life has this uncanny ability to be able to um, teach us the hard lesson. They're going to find out real soon. Yes, sir. I, I do love them, but you know what, Pastor? I love the most high more. And today, this week, I am enjoying the new me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The new, new, new. Hey, say it, ooh. Come on, sister. Hey. I'm enjoying the new me. Thank you for that message, Pastor. Thank you for that message. Thank you. For well, that you message. should. Thank my father. You should. Yeah. Thank the most high for that message that come through. But we bless you, Pastor. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. I don't know what the king's going to bring, but I'm ready to sing my rock. Hey. Come on, sister. Hey, hey, Mara. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, Mike. Love all y'all. I love my family. Be the Father's will. We'll be there. I believe it's okay. will. Bless you, Sister Malaysia.
That's, yes, sir. Flash. All right, let's go try it again. New York, brother Dominique, brought 718 718. Pastor Dog, I'm going to start with you, radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shabbat Shalom, my pastor. How you doing? Doing all right. How can I help you, son? Pastor, I just had uh, two questions tonight. What is it? You got two of them. Uh, um. One is out of Judges 19. All right, let's hear it. Um, Start from verse 2. It says, And his con- his concubine committed a whoring against him and went away from him to her father's house at Bethlehem in Yehuda, and was there for four new moons of days. And her husband arose and went after her to speak to her heart and bring her back having his servants and a couple of donkeys with him. My question was, if this, um, if this person had a concubine, is he her husband? Well, that's one thing we don't understand is that a concubine belongs to that man um, and is under agreement just like a wife is. It's just that their status is different. So don't get confused so much about translation and stuff, especially when these English people are trying to understand Hebrew culture and Hebrew heritage because they just simply don't. You understand? Okay. See, see, women in Israel didn't do like to do today where women are out on the market and they run around all over the place. And, and, um, and, and they, I mean, it's it just crazy. It's just really crazy the way this world has behaved. Two inches and stuff, but a concubine was up under a man's covering, and she had a different status. Um, you know what I mean? For instance, if she had children and the man died, he would give them gifts, but he would give the inheritance to his firstborn. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, next question, and then I'm done for the night. Uh, Ecclesiastes. 42, 12 to 14, uh, it reads, Behold not everybody's beauty, and sit not in the midst of women. Yeah. For from garments cometh a moth, and from women wickedness. Yeah. Better is the churlishness of a man than a courteous woman, than a courteous woman. A woman, I say, which brings shame and reproach. I got the first two verses. Um, to me, it was telling me that, you know, try not to sit in the midst of women that are vain and they're all about their outside beauty. Yeah. And when it says that the garments come, come as, uh, four garments uh, come to moths, and moths eat huh. garments, so <coughs> their outside is corrupt. But the only thing that I didn't get was um, verse 14 that was saying, better is the churlishness of a man than a courteous woman. Um, I don't know if you could explain that to me because I would think that a courteous woman would be better than a churlish, the churlishness of a man. How much have you actually spent time in seeing the difference um, in how that the word speaks? concerning men and, and women in the word of Yah and what it says concerning men and women in their roles. How much? Uh, not very much time. Well, I mean, how long have you been listening to me? A uh, good amount of time. And do you, do you understand exactly what's going on with the word? Uh, the way that y'all speaks to yes. a woman that's opposed to a man? Yes, sir. I'm trying to get you to think. Okay. The word curly, you have to understand. <laughs> Boy, how do I say this? Without, I'm going to offend somebody anyway when I say it, okay? All right. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Hmm. 
Boy, this one's gonna sting. <laughs> <laughs> this one is gonna sting. I mean, all right, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Another word, or another translation is, is better, better, look at this, is the wickedness of a man than a woman who does good. Now you think about that. <laughs> oh, man. Do you see what the Most High Yah knows about a woman, tries to warn us about a woman that today people just simply don't see? When you get to the point that a man in all his wickedness is better than a woman that does good, boy, I tell you, that, that is a hard-hitting fact. Woo! Who can accept? That's a hard saying today. Who can accept that? By sin entering into the world, who did it come from first? The woman. The woman. The woman. And who is it mostly being influenced by today? No women. The woman. Isaiah said children are oppressors and women rule over them. I'm telling you, that's why I try my best to keep our sisters in a humble state, kind of like Suzanne, if you know what I mean. And Miriam and all them, you know, good examples because there's there's a spirit and a level that works in them simply because they are the weaker vessel that they do not comprehend or understand any way, shape, fashion, or form. They don't get it. And when you hear y'all's opinion, y'all's opinion about a woman is really not that good unless she is some serious y'all fearing woman. Mm. Wow. That's rough. That's rough. Mm. Of a man, I searched among a thousand and I found one. A woman, I couldn't find none. Ooh. Wee. Mm. You hearing this? Never. I think we better wake up to what y'all says. Uh, well, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> you broke it down as usual. Well, uh, you asked. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I opened up a can of worms. Glory to the king. But, um, Hallelujah. Well, Shabbat Shalom to you, my strength over there at Drayway, all over the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Dominique. Bless you. Shabbat Shalom. Let's go to Florida. That was that brother. Marcy's, Marcy's, Marcy's. I can't pronounce. Tell me what your name is over in Florida. It's Pastor Dow. He'll serve with you with radio broadcast. I can help you. Marcy's, I had it. All right, what you got, my brother? Yeah, oh, I want to say about some Um, I was originally um started fellowship there, but uh, um, the Jerry, the Jerry down in Florida. Yeah. I'm in New York right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a question I wanted to ask you. All right. Um, uh, I was originally I originally grew up in a Seventh Day Adventist um atmosphere. Really? And, you know, I kind of been, yeah, I, I kind of been following the ministry, you know, for a little while after Brother Jerry introduced me to you a little while back. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a journey. Yeah, it's, it's a journey. journey. It's fun. <laughs> so I love the pill, you know, um, but, um, like, I want to ask a question based off, like, baptism. Like, I was already baptized in, in that, um, the Sunday of culture, so, like, as, as far as, like, following the straight way truth or following this the um the truth, like would I have to be rebaptized or and how would that how would that go? 
I would actually find a saint that's in the Most High God is in in the truth that keeps the commandments. That's the difference. Uh, is this straight away? I would get baptized again. I would because being baptized Seventh Day Adventist is not being baptized in 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 um in in, in being an Israelite, Yah's chosen people. Mm -hmm. Them people All are right. of another nation and another religion. All right, so basically, I would have to find somebody, um, as far as um, in the truth, or you yourself, when it, whenever that's possible to. Um, Where are you at? Me into the truth. Are you in North Georgia? I mean, North Florida, or South Florida. No, I actually just, I actually just moved from from Florida, from Florida because you know I've been trying to get away from um, you know all the Gentile ways and the heathen ways and that was the only way I could escape. So actually I'm actually on my own right now. Where are you know, at? kinda of traveling the road. I'm in New York right now. You're in New York? Yeah. Why don't you leave your number in the dining hall and tell us where you at New York? Call the dining hall. You got that number? Yeah, I actually got in contact with a couple of brothers, um, Brother Jerry and con contact me with um Brother Phoenix. I'm supposed to be going to fellowship with them on this about coming up. Well, there you are. Now you got a way that one of them yeah. brothers can baptize you. All right. So, um, all right. I, I just want to also say, you know, um, I just appreciate, you know, you being able to um, just speak the truth. I admire that because, you know, it's, it's something hard. And, you know, over time, it just it starts to sink in, you know, and you realize that. The, the, um, the truth is the truth, and it cannot be changed. Right. I just say very. I really admire. I really, really admire um, being able to boldly speak the truth without, like what you just did with um, the brothers just on the line before me. How even though it hurt, you just gotta, you gotta speak it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, man. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you for that, man. And um, yeah, I just I just want to say I, I want to get acquainted with all the brothers and the sisters out there in the, in the truth. Hopefully, you know. Um, we'll get over time. We'll get more acquainted um, in, in the in the in the in the ministry. So Shabbat Shalom, Hallelujah to everybody. I just want to say um, a shout out to Brother Jerry for you know not giving up, get, not giving up on me because you know it was a it was a journey, um, Pastor. It was a journey. <laughs> so um, Brother Al, Al too, and I just want to say Shabbat Shalom to everybody else. All right, Pastor. Hallelujah, bless you, my brother. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> I tell you what, y'all, all y'all, y'all need to be making sure that when you ask questions, you ready for the answer. Cause I'm telling you, most people today, um, they exalt their own book of the law and their own opinion above y'all's word. Woo! Well, I'm telling you, y'all's word is not what you think it is. Let's go to Minnesota, brother Dan. Call number six five one six five one. Pastor Dow, you want to share with you radio broadcast? I can have brother Dan. Hey, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, brother Dan. Good hearing your voice, sir. Hey. Oh, good to hear from you, too. Yeah, I just got a few things here. Um, we had a great week. Uh, Cody and I have been hitting it. Uh, actually, work's been a little bit slow, but uh, yeah, we'll provide. You know, we get the work right at the last minute. And uh, so we've had, uh, even though work's slow, we've still had some uh, great weeks. And... Uh, my 18-year-old uh, daughter has, has been helping us this week. All right. And just been a huge, uh, yeah, just a huge blessing to take some of the strain off me, you know. So that's been good. And, uh, hey, we happen to be working <laughs> near uh, my favorite silver shop, coin shop. So I went in, and uh, I bought some silver and gold uh, earlier. I was paying for it, and I picked her up a 10-ounce uh, silver bar. So minting. And so, yeah, a after work, I paid her with that. And, you know, I, th I thought she'd be really excited, but, you know, she, she still was tentative. You know, oh, what am I going to do with this? You know, and I, I explained to her, Cassidy, just hold on to it. You know, this is going to this is gonna work out well for you. Just take it home and uh, enjoy owning your first uh, little bit of uh, precious metals. You got that right. So, so that's... Yeah, yeah, anyhow. Hey, uh, one question, you know, um, what about, you know, in uh, in uh, Proverbs, I think it says uh, that Yahweh holds the heart of the king and directs it the way he wants, and, and in the New Testament, doesn't Paul 
tell us to pray for the pray for those in authority that we lead a quiet and peaceable life. What about what about mentioning Trump in prayer? Uh, why not? You know. Um, sure, you can. It, it couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt at all. Did you you are exactly spot on. Sure, sure. You know. Uh, I think it would be smart. I don't, uh, you know, yeah, it would be wonderful if they were a believer, but uh, all I want is a, a quiet and peaceable life, and uh, uh, I, I like what you've been saying about Trump. It's it's great. I, I kind of haven't been following it other than listening to you. Uh, just don't have time and uh, uh, whatnot, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate you uh, keeping us, you know, on track of what's what's going on with Trump. I, I think it, he's entertaining. He's great to listen to and and got, uh, you know, it, it's fresh. But, uh, hey, uh, also, I was, uh, a, a friend of mine uh, runs a contracting business, uh, moves trees, you know, with the big truck, they spade them in. Yes. And uh, we had a couple of trees, we had a couple of trees dropped in our yard, and uh, I asked him, hey, uh, do you have any extra trucks up there? And he does have a, an extra dump truck. It's a 77 Louisville Ford with a big block gas engine, air brakes. And uh, I, I just thought, man, you know, are you guys in need of a truck? Oh, we can always use a truck. I mean, you know, a, a truck is a lifeline of a community. Yeah, you know, and it's a, it's a heavy truck. You know, it would have a low gear to go up and down the hill. Right. And, uh, you know, air brakes and stuff. And I, I'm going to run. It's only a few miles away. I'm going to run and look at it and, uh, and see if it's something that it could possibly be. Uh, it hasn't run for a few years. But uh, knowing this guy, he takes real good care of his stuff. And uh, it, it hasn't been used in construction. It's just been used in, in light landscaping and stuff. So I'm going to look at it and... Um, See if, if it's something uh, that could work. Sure. You know? Let us know what kind of yeah, price he's offering. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I called Elder Doug earlier. I was in the middle of a job. I couldn't talk to him, but I've been wanting to uh, see if, if if there's any chance of him coming up, you know, to visit his mom or uh, his kids and uh, offer me a little, me and my wife, you know, we're still not living together. She's been gone a year and a half. Uh, just one, uh, I would just love for my wife to hear an Israelite because we've we've talked to a few Christian counselors and it, it's just the most frustrating, futile uh, thing that I, you can you can imagine. You know? I, yes, sir, I can imagine. Yeah, you can imagine. So, but anyhow, I'll, I'll call him this week and uh, see if what he's up to and um, and all that kind of stuff. But. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want to sh I want to uh, say thanks to Ashley. You know, Ashley uh, comes through for me and Cody. She sends us an encouraging uh, email or text once in a while, and I tell you, they're just uh, a lifeline. You know, we're up here kind of uh, isolated here, not too much fellowship going on, but uh, <laughs> Ashley's the one. She always encourages us to hang on and and. Uh, so I, I just, uh, we really appreciate that from her. And, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I, I did see a picture of the baby, and uh, Zephan was holding him, and we enlarged the picture. And Cody and I both said, look at this kid. He's almost as big as Zephan. You got that right. It was a pretty, yeah, pretty cute, precious, totally. And uh, anyhow, I won't take you. Hey, uh, one other thing, who's ever running that camera? They keep cutting off your scripture screen up there. You know, and when we're trying to look, it's it's frustrating not to see the. Yeah, I need to tell Sister Vicky that. Yeah. She, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I've been meaning to say something to her about that. She needs to be a whole lot more attentive to not cut off the scripture scene. Uh, scene. I, I, we'll correct that, brother, brother Dan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pastor. Uh, yeah, thanks for your uh, preaching and the, the truth. Uh, we love it. We totally. Totally love it, and uh, it won't be long. We'll uh, come. Hopefully, we can come down in the winter again and uh, work. And uh, well, we enjoyed uh, watching the block, laying the block. <laughs> that was great. Well, you know, y'all always welcome. <laughs> All right. Okay, Pastor. Love you, and uh, Shabbat Shalom.
to all the saints and you, and we'll uh, see you soon. Hallelujah, my brother. Bless you. Shabbat shalom. Good old okay, thanks, Pastor. Bless you. Bye -bye. Bro, Dan and Brother Cody, faithful Israelites. Hey, that's it. I'm getting ready for tomorrow. I bless you all. I love you. Sweet, precious, strong, victorious, mighty, overcoming name. I'll soon come in, King. I'll see you on Jesus Christ. Shabbat shalom. King coming. Uh-oh, look at him looking.